The diesel is gone, the performance petrol engines are back for the big Audi SUVs. This comparison review here with the new Audi SQ8 and the new Audi SQ7. Both now coming again worldwide with the 4 liter V8 bi turbo engine. And of course, everything here exterior, interior, and the performance driving experience. Join us in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go! Here in the front, we can see a very strong styling with this single frame grille. And you will also see that the SQ8 here has a wider frame around the grille than the Q7. You'll soon see that. Here also, not only this very beautiful Misano red color, you can of course get different colors, but here there's also the additional black package where you have the black accentuations here in the shiny black in the lower part and also around the grille. Headlamps start with LED as standard, also beautiful modern signature here you can see and the sq8 optional then with matrix led there's a difference then to the sq7 where you can get these headlamps also standard led but then not only matrix LED, matrix led but exclusively for the q7 in here also optional these laser lights even more elaborated high beam function you can also see them with the blue accentuations here and blue is also the color for today with the sq7 it's called atoll blue a very beautiful one yeah somewhat in the direction of a thomas blue here <laughs> and you can see here we have the standard grille with the chrome frame around then you can see this area is not as wide as with the sq8 so a little bit more subtle look you can say so the q8 in general has a sportier styling but a difference is definitely you could also get the black accentuations for the sq7 it's just a matter of preference here of course when you have the silver contrast it looks a little bit more sporty elegant and with the black one it's rather a little bit you know sporty menacing and I know you guys always want to see the turning indicators right here with the SQ7. The ending right here is very interesting, very distinct. And you get these cascading indicators when you pick a matrix LED light at Audi. And contrast to that, the one of the SQ8, a little bit more subtle in this case, but also somewhat special. I think both look really awesome. The length of the Q8 is 5 meters, 16 foot 4 or 197 inches. And the difference is just that the Q7 is about 5 centimeters or 2 inches longer. They both share the very same wheelbase, just that the Q7 has a longer overhang in the rear and then also the option of a third seating row. A really cool shot with both here, you know, parallel right in the side profile. You can see here the wheel arches, always in vehicle color for these sporty models. One small slight difference here. The SQ8 comes with 21 to 23 inch wheels, whereas the SQ7 comes with 20 inch to 22 inch wheels. So the SQ7 then is a size smaller and also the tires themselves, they're a little bit wider here with the SQ8. So a little sportier setup, but they both share the same base hardware. They come standard with an adaptive air suspension and also the rear axle steering is now included for both models. So five degrees, in the opposite direction, 
than the front wheels so that reduces the turning circle by about a meter of course also gives you more agility at lower speeds at higher speeds than the rear axle steers in the same direction up to 1.5 degrees and optional you can also get an anti roll or anti tilt control so the vehicle stays more upright and also a sports differential for the rear axle both here with an all-wheel drive setup that is rear wheel biased so you also have power to the front but rather a standard quattro all-wheel drive very interesting and of course you can see design wise here the difference once again with this you know standard silver contrast here for example at the side mirror caps once again here then with the dark or night package right here you can see also black frames around the windows where it has the chrome frames around here and also the silver contrast in the lower part in contrast to the black so very interesting to see them and of course the q7 just continues here with this roof line over here looks more you know a little bit box stylish you know so to speak whereas the q8 has this more elegant falling roof line but not a classical very round coupe shape so that's why i also really like the sq8 from the styling but which one is your favorite and the rear comparison right here and this is you know quite obvious that the sq8 has the sportier styling here with the falling line right here and also the light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle very beautiful job and again the black accentuations also here in the lower part and then we can see the SQ7 with the more upright style that you have a little bit more space on the interior and very different tail end designs. So actually from the rear, they are most different, we can say. And here with the silver contrast, but as I said, you could also get the black styling then here for the SQ7. And in the lower part, we can see here, <whistles> case for the autofuel fake exhaust police. Well. It's not a pure fake exhaust because the air does go through, but it's definitely an outside beauty tip because the real exhaust is on the inside, but also the real one has four pipes. And the cascading turning indicators, and funny to see here in the SQ7, they are below the tail lamp unit, and here with the SQ8, they are above the tail lamp unit. And we also have a special paint here for the SQ8 for you. This one is called Velvet Purple. It's an exclusive color, so you have to go over the exclusive program, but definitely, yeah, a very, very unique one. What do you think? I think, you know, in this very special color, the SQ8 gets more a little bit of Lambo style, doesn't it? And now the trunk comparison, we start with the SQ8. And the cool thing is really because it's not this classic SUV coupe, you just lose a little bit of the height right here. That's what you lose in comparison to the Q7 liter figure here around 600 liters in the capacity so you can very well still use it you can see it here this is here like a you know a trunk splitter but you can also remove it completely that's possible in the front you can put this one here up just for some additional you know repair equipment and so on and you can lower the vehicle here air suspension wise for example and this cover right here it's like this actually very good rails here also at the side and then we have to go around to fold the seats because they work like this and you know that way it would be fixed of course here in the one third two thirds split and one cool feature is that here this top cover here where you don't use it manually it's just going back and forth also electrically automatically really cool you can see when i close the hatch right here not yet but as soon as it's closed and well you can't really see it but if you really look closer uh, there it is there it is <laughs> then it closes so um when i open it again then you can see there it is and it, it's drawn back and now the sq7 here the capacity is 865 liters so more than 200 liters more than the sq8 and we have removed first of all this cover which would also automatically go up and down and i also removed here you know this splitter and it's like a scroll in here like and here it says you shall subscribe i hope you already did <laughs> so and here the third seating row and this can be folded up here also from here electronically that's actually a very nice solution 
And the main difference is due to the longer overhang in the Q7, you have a longer trunk, that's the thing, and you have a little bit more height right here. So it's an also easier with a backpack and so on. Of course, it also easily fits in the SQ8, but you're just a little bit more flexible here with the SQ7. We start with the interior overview here today because SQ7, SQ8 is just the same right here. Horizontal stress, also then here with the vents, a lot of black piano local use. However, here the styling elements in carbon fiber available here for the S models. Quattro logo will be illuminated at night with the ambient lighting. That's a very beautiful thing, definitely. The screen setup is as this, 12.3 inch digital instruments. 10.1 inch central screen and 8.6 inch screen like this for temperature control but also for address input in combination to that soon more details to the screens steering wheel here with the perforation at the side flat bottom very good size for that shifting pedals here for the automatic gearbox and here you control for example the view for the digital instruments we will show you that and a manual volume knob this is really cool you know so easy to control straightforward design and even though you have a lot of touch controls here you will see it it is easily reachable here also to control the temperature and so on so for a touch solution it's one of the best ones i think then here in the lower middle console black start engine so start and stop engine button this is also a sporty element and at the sides again the carbon fiber structure yeah, here again, this is collecting a lot of fingerprints and so on. We have adaptive cup holders. This is also then the car key with an S logo. And further down the middle console, this armrest here can be put up just a little bit and like this. And then you have USB-C connectors here now too, but also an inductive charging um, port. However, I rather use the cable. Apple CarPlay you can use with the cable, but also wireless android auto just with the cable audi does have one of the best virtual instruments here boom, boom. <laughs> and with the rpms that's of course of course very cool to see you can have the map in the middle path small or change the view to the map completely this is of course one of the big advantages then of these digital instruments because you are so flexible especially then with the map view and the head-up display with the current speed and assistance system information. And if you have a root set, for example, then you also see some GPS arrows. Now details to the screens right here. Good integration of the Apple CarPlay. And let's also listen to the optional 23 speaker B&O sound system. Wow. What a surround sound. Awesome. Reading very crystal clear. So, yeah. This is really very cool, one of the best systems on the market, I think. And then you can go back to this MMI, this is the main menu. You can also have this customizable main menu, but I think this one is just easier. And you can also adjust where you want to have that, or if you want to have, for example, when you want to have the Apple CarPlay here on the left side also, then you can also put it here, and then you have it here in a, you know, in a, in a fast access. So this is actually a nice solution or to the GPS, which has a good overview. And the CPU they use here for this um, infotainment system is also sufficient that it's you know very responsive. So that is actually very, very well done. In the car settings right here, you can have the drive select because the air suspension varies. For example, it goes down in dynamic mode or um, you can also you know, put it up a little bit. It also depends on the speed you're driving when you drive faster it automatically goes down, for example. Well, and then this upper and lower screen sometimes play together. It is standard here. You have the vents control, like this here, the vents, and then the temperature is right here. Or either slide it or click it. You can also use the voice command, however. Set temperature to 22 degrees. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. 
and then when you change it on the right side, for example, there's one trick to synchronize it. And this is actually quite nice. I Meanwhile, I think here, like this, you like this closing gesture, and then you have both sides synchronized again. So I think for, again, a touch-only solution, you can very well use that here. Why not? And then when you are in the GPS and want to have some address input, you can, again, either use the voice command or it switches then here in the lower part to a keyboard, either like this or especially while driving here, then, for example, you can uh, just write Berlin or so, and then it's reacting on the top part. Now let's take a look at the differences. First of all, the door closing sound here, SQ8. Wow, nice sound, although we have the frameless windows and sometimes there is not such a good door closing sound when there's frameless windows. This is, of course, an emotional feature, but great closing sound here. However, there's also the optional feature of the soft close. Ah, magic. Yeah, but the thing is when you have the soft close, then you also have this motor working against you when you, you know, suddenly open the door, for example. Then instead of the doors, straightforward design then Alcantara used at the inside of the doors nice job and these carbon fiber inserts you can very well use also these door pockets and then the front dashboard design as we said is similar SQ8 and SQ7 as for the seats here the dark design different colors available and in Euro for example you would start with the sports seat with separated head restraint that also features Alcantara on the inside we would recommend that this is an optional, the Super Sport Seat or the Sport Seat Plus, which has these integrated head restraint. This is a standard seat in the US. And sadly, this one only comes with animal skin spec, so they need some alternatives which are sportier and more sustainable in this case here. Other than that, the general seating comfort, general seating comfort <laughs> is quite good actually. And um, although the standard sport seat, if you are in a European market, would be a little bit more comfortable. This one then a little bit stiffer, um, just also from the surface. So, but still considering for a sport seat, you still have a good long-term comfort. One meters 86 or six foot one, and it leaves plenty of headroom right here. You also have a panoramic roof as an option, then you would have less headroom, but still it would be totally sufficient. Steering wheel control is electric right here, and you can easily find a very nice seating position, definitely already here in the SQ8. Now, what's the difference then to the SQ7? Remember here, the A pillar, how it looks like here. So, and then let's compare it directly to the SQ7. That's the good thing because we have both vehicles here on location today. And first of all, as for the design, this can be, you know, can be bought for both vehicles, but here we have design with the gray. To me, a little bit, you know, lighter and more likable, but that's of course personal preference with the Alcantara and also with the seat again with the S stamping and of course in general in the front pretty similar these two cars and when I get inside right here like this see there's a little bit more space here as for the A pillar um, headroom wise also really plenty a little bit more of course so if you're really tall and want a panoramic roof then you would have an advantage here with the SQ7 but in general the difference in the front between these two cars are rather minor. Now to the rear of the SQ8. You can see here again the nice Alcantara design on the inside and in this case we also have the electric shade here for the rear windows but they are already tinted so this would be like a you know, double darkening then. You see you have a lot of space in the rear. There's a big middle tunnel, yes of course. And then there's also this additional climate unit here. In this case the four zone AC which is you know quite a nice comfort feature and this quilted structure here in the you know in the rear part as well but this is not comfortable you know when you have a lot of contrast stitching here with the uh, slick surfaces now let's get inside also very easy and you have plenty of legroom here left so and both cars share the same wheelbase so legroom is not really the issue um, yeah, and very comfortable here, more comfortable than in the big sedans or so on. And although this is here the SUV Coupe, there's still a lot of headroom left. And this is also an advantage if you compare it to a BMW X6 or the Mercedes GLE, because the Q8 is not such an SUV Coupe as the other competitors, for example. So, and then you also have here, can you adjust the inclination right there and also can move this bench forward 
and then you have a little, little bit longer trunk or backward again so very flexible and very comfortable hard how it is in the Q7 or the SQ7. First of all, we have the gray design here once again, which looks a little bit nicer. In this case here, we have the manual shade for the rear. And you'll see you have the similar leg room as well. You can adjust these seats individually. So let me get inside, and this would be then, you know, the most backward position, still a lot of leg room but i feel even that the seat is a um, little bit more forward to you know ensure the third seating row so it seems like we had a little bit more leg room in the q5 q8 again we is the same as just how the seats are being positioned a lot of headroom even more than in the q8 it also goes back on to the you no know, to the further part and also slide this forward and backward and again here this um, individually done um there's a difference here to you know you can have a different lever here this and one difference and again in the sitting in the middle part does work and it's also quite comfortable so especially when you put it all the way back so it's easy to put five tall adults in here um, and then i slide it here in the forward position i could still sit like this here leg room wise now the question is what about the third seating row and there's a trick for that so we first have to fold down this back part like this and then push here move it like this then there's a hydraulic help or gastroid help and then you can take a look here at the third seating row of course it's somewhat close it's not the longest vehicle for that and if the seat is in the most backward position i could not fit in there but Let's just try, I have moved the other half there, a little bit more to the front. If it's somehow possible, I squeeze myself in here and I smell these comments with timestamp. Thomas in the rear, in the rear, rear seat, Thomas in the third row seat. Not sure how we, how we should call it. So, yeah, that's close. I mean, there's like gaps um, where you can put your feet and yeah little bit squeezed in but it does work and in this configuration i could really sit here and behind this so i think yeah i mean why not and they also thought of isofix here um, on the third seating row so you can use the also for child seats for example and headroom um, it's still okay when i leave my spine relaxed only when i put my spine up then i do hit the head right there but that's definitely the main difference here SQ8, SQ7, you're more flexible, you can go for this third seating row, you just have more, you know, more possibilities. engines so the sq8 and the sq7 was so far at least in europe offered them with uh, turbo diesel but now i decided to go back with the petrol engines again looking at the whole worldwide market that the performance suv is rather bought than also with a petrol engine so what do we have here is a four liter v8 by turbo cylinder on demand mild hybrid both inside for fuel economy but for power output, you have here 507 horsepower, 770 newton meters of torque. And the acceleration figure is 4.1 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. If you compare, for example, an SQ8 to an RSQ8, it's 0.3 seconds as the RSQ8 faster and 100 horsepower more. But for that, you pay 25,000 euros more. Here, the SQ8, for example, 100,000 euros in Germany without extra equipment or $90,000 in the US. Of course, with these big Audi vehicles, usually you can easily add some 30k options to the base price. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Audi SQ8 versus SQ7. We start with the SQ8 here on the test track and let's just floor it out acceleration wise and do some dynamic driving let's go
Plop, that was already 160 kilometers an hour. Wow, that was spectacular. You could already you could see like how the car is lifting up in the front. Really cool. It's of course a heavy SUV, but still for such a heavy SUV, good driving dynamics. We have the EC Sport mode. Actually, we have the EC Off mode, have we? So here we're about 50 kilometers an hour and see in the slalom and yeah, this is again, look how precise it is steering wise, incredible. We just exit here. Wow, that was pretty cool. So very precise from the steering wheel. Um, so there's no dead area here whatsoever. Every single command is being transported. Really amazing. The steering setup is yeah one of the best there is not only for SUVs, but also for cars in general. Of course, here in these corners, when also when accelerating out, you feel it's a rear wheel bias from this all wheel drive. So uh, there's no understeering or something, but you definitely do feel the weight of this vehicle. It is a big SUV, so you cannot compare really to sports cars, yes, but we also have this anti-tilt or anti-roll control in here. So considering it's a high-built car, you see it's hardly leaning at all. It stays really, really upright. And by the way, we can also um, see the difference here. Um, ESC Sport, that's you know the one step. So if we go to the slalom here in ESC Sport, let's see what the car is doing. So sometimes I feel that it's like there's some interfer in, uh, interference. Oh, one of these I got. <laughs> so when I put it completely off, so I hold it, that's of course just for you know racetrack purposes. Then I can do a little bit more with the vehicle and it just feels a little bit more loose. And there you also hear some tire squeaking. So yeah, subtle difference definitely, but interesting to experience it. And again, when I do some accelerating out of the corner here, like this. Yeah, very smooth, very nice also sound-wise. So really amazing what this big SUV can do here. Difference to the RS Q8. The RS, RS Q8 was even more screaming from the exhaust. Hardware-wise is difference on the front axle. So the front axle is a little bit crisper on the RS Q8. Uh, the hardware components then suspension wise they are actually quite the same um, so yeah this one is not as stiff suspension wise so a little bit softer so we have you know let's say a little bit um, smoother setup in comparison so but here yeah, I mean no matter what you want to do is very precise as we'll see in this one of the key features here so RSQ8 not worth 25,000 euros more, definitely not. This one is already coming very close. But if you want it even sportier, even a little bit crisper and stiffer, then the RSQ8 would be fine. However, both SQ8 and RSQ8 still deliver a good comfort. We're here in the sports or then the dynamic, dynamic mode, and still we have a good comfort feeling. And even if you just drive it in the outdoor and the in the comfort mode and so on. Here, due to this optional anti-roll control, you see it's hardly shaking up. So even just in the comfort mode, it's very sporty. And at any time, you can just throw it out like this. Not so much sound feedback like in dynamic mode. Comparison here, dynamic mode. Yeah, I think that got quite clear. Um, <laughs> also, the RPMs are turned up higher and so on. Shifting characteristics um, are being changed. So. Um, very impressive what they've done here with this big SUV. So, wow. And now we switch over to the SQ7. And interesting, we have the more classic gauges here. The other gauges were these performance gauges, but you can just pick them in the infotainment system which design you want to have. But you can see both very clearly. Let's see if there's any difference in driving between the SQ8 and the SQ7. Let's just do the very same. Plop, that's 160 again. and. You really see you know, how these gears were hammered in. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> definitely a lot of fun to accelerate these out. And let's now also go 
into this slalom, see if there's any difference here. Yeah, I think uh, the EC is ruling a little bit earlier, so let's test that was EC Sport. Let's test it with the EC off. Now EC is off. So let's see about that. Uh -huh, that's better. That's better, yeah. But yeah, I have to say, it does feel a little bit different, right? Michelle, what do you think? So to, to me, the SQ8 felt a little bit sportier. I think, you know, when you're just doing the acceleration, just running straight, you know, there's hardly any difference here. Accelerate out of the corner. Yeah, that's very powerful. But I think in the slalom, there in the slalom, you did feel a difference. So first of all, I felt that the ESC would work earlier. Maybe it's, you know, it's just me, but um, definitely the, uh, the SQ8 had a little sporting notch, but I think you rather feel it when you really push it like you would have the test track here. On the normal open road, um, not necessary that you would feel a big difference. Here we get now a little bit faster in this slalom. Let's see, high entry speed, so I have to work a little bit more. Wow, but I mean, this, again, a huge SUV and you have very good control over it. So once again, this precise steering is something that is, yeah, to me, one of the coolest things here. Um, also here, let's drive a little bit faster. Lane change at about 100 kilometers an hour. Wow so easily done once again and also listen to the noise insulation so we're once again accelerating out of the corner nice sound and here for example typical motorway speed 130 kilometers an hour when I shift up very silent what a great noise insulation so it's super super silent in here so this is also one of the things that is famous for the Q7 in general this very good noise insulation yeah and it's so relaxing to drive at the same time you don't need much force in the steering for example so um, yeah look at that however indeed um, I'm a little surprised I would thought I would have thought that they are exactly the same as for driving they do come very close but I think setup wise the SQ8 does give us a little sportier notch so really holds what it promises just from the visual part doesn't mean that this is less sportier zone and of course there's always the limitation with these vehicles you still feel the weight you know still feel um, the heaviness of this SUV um, here in acceleration this is just sports car like no doubt but as soon as you go into the corners then there is a difference to a low sitting sports car you just have to know that and that's something you can find out here on the, on, the, on the track. And one of the cooler things is also with this rear axle steering. So when we're at, you know, at like these lower speeds, this is also why the slalom is working that well here at low, like 50 or like 40 kilometers an hour, then the rear axle um, is really helping us. And here, for example, also with a turning circle when we're driving a little bit slower. So like this here, I mean, this is, this is crazy. It feels like that what we are doing a circle with a very, very small vehicle. Michelle likes that. <laughs> so, yeah, this is one of the best things with the rear axle steering. So, it is expensive, yes, but if I would pick one option to make life easier with a bigger vehicle, rear axle steering it is. <laughs> and now to some street driving of the SQ8. So, more relaxed manner, but yeah, what is relaxed in this vehicle? Um, <laughs> it can be, of course, at any time, but of course you can also, once again, at any time, tune it up. And you do not necessarily have to pick the drive mode. This is also a difference to the RSQ8, where you have the RS button at the steering wheel, which is quite cool, of course. But here you have to use this drive select, which is sometimes a little bit hard to do while driving. Um, however, you can also use it just in the auto mode and, you know, Let's say, oh, you want to do like a fast acceleration now, like here 40 to 80 or 40 to 100, which you can do. Then you just use the shifting lever and switch from D to S shifting mode. Then you already have the, um, you know, the transmission set up and then it also goes quicker or in third gear like this. Well, that's already it. So yeah, that always works, no problem. And you can, of course, use the shifting pedals. Shift down and 
that's always very nice. And at the same time, just go back to the D to the auto mode and then the engine can also be actually quite silent. And we also tell you something more about the fuel economy because this is also with the Zinna deactivation and, uh, and the M half technology mild hybrid. So because you won't be racing this car all the time, you do have the power on demand. We've shown you that on the race track, well, on the test track, but you know, probably that's not how you would use this car all the time, but also just for relaxed driving. And this is possible, again, with this great noise insulation, plus then this very sovereign ride when you have a big engine, but let it run at lower RPMs, it also feels pretty relaxing. That's the thing, you know, so you, it's not necessary that it, you only have the sporty use of that. Interesting, by the way, that the tires here of the SQ8 are always bigger indeed, not in the sense of wider, but in the sense of higher. So on the one hand, we have the 20, three inch wheels here mounted. It's of course an option. Compared to the 22 inch we have on the SQ7. And you can also drive both cars with the same size. But here then, still there, the, you know, they have more tire left, although we have the bigger alloy. And that's very interesting because on the one hand, this car feels a little bit sportier, mainly due to the bigger wheels. On the other hand, because they're also higher, you then have again more dampening from the rubber which again ensures the comfort you still have with the bigger alloys. A little bit complicated maybe, but also interesting. So, you know, designers mainly took that decision because they just want to have a, you know, a bigger look, a more, you know, substantial look for the Q8 in general and especially for the SQ8, whereas the Q7 or I mean, the SQ7 is supposed to look a little bit more sporty elegant still you know but i think that that really works and i can just stress again with this air suspension here you still have some comfort even though we have 23 inch wheels which is very very rare of course you do feel you know some stuff on the ground and here but it's still very 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 okay if you want more comfort you would leave it with the base wheel size each then you have even more you know tire dampening there from from the rubber um, yeah but of course it's always a question of design versus comfort and this sporty steering is not only helping well sporty steering but also just an everyday driving knife because you can keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time you know have to grab around and so on parking in and out is also relatively easy for example and once again when you don't hit the throttle you hardly hear the engine it's very well insulated from the whole vehicle as for the visibility by the way still works very well with the q8 so we also you know the visibility to the rear for example no problem at all then the cruise control you can activate here with a separate column next to the steering wheel and this is also the predictive cruise control so there's traffic sign recognition in there i also see it in the head-up display at the moment 60 kilometers an hour and also when I, for example, approach the next town or the next intersection or the next roundabout, the car will automatically decrease the speed so that fuel is saved and you don't have like, you know, unnecessary acceleration and then unnecessary braking once again. So the predictive cruise control is also working very well. Blind spot monitor is also included right here. There's no autobahn situation here at the moment where we would have overtaking cars or something there will be a flashing light then here in the side mirrors. So the assistance systems, they work very well in this vehicle. And here also, I'm not braking at the moment. See if it's reducing to zero. Of course, I'm staying you know, alert that in case I could, I did not press the brake at all. And now I did not hit the accelerator. You can see it also works in traffic situations. Sensors working very well here. I'm not doing anything. It's not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> so here, yet again, very well done. Braking and accelerating also in traffic situations. All done by the adaptive cruise control. Now has realized we are inside a village, reducing it to 50 kilometers an hour, traffic signs and recognition. Here reducing even more again due to the distance to the car in front of us. So, so far flawless assistance systems, very cool. 
and here on the left upper column then you can also uh, activate the lane keeping assist the more sophisticated one and this would be a thing then for example on the motorway that you really kept in the lane And now SQ7 road driving. Let's see if there's any difference. And we'll also talk about the fuel economy. And when you're driving in the road, basically there's hardly any difference you feel between SQ7 and SQ8. It's really more about the wheel choices. Um, you know, this is, this is something that has more a crucial effect on driving. But here, once again, it's a big SUV and it feels so light on the test track. There you do feel the weight when you really push it, but on the open road here, you know, countryside, you hardly feel the weight because there are not so many G-forces being applied. And what else we could do here, for example, is stay in the normal mode and then don't use the S-shifting mode, but just use the shifting pedals to shift down and have the acceleration by that. For example, go back to the second gear, Really nice. And by the way, just again the difference when I'm in the dynamic mode, you see how the gears are you know really hammered in. Like bam, you know? So this is a difference that you also feel more that the shifting is taking place. Other than that, the shifting is very, very subtle, very smooth transition, then then you hardly feel them. Oh, this is here the day obviously where I <laughs> Uh, let all the cyclists pass by. Yeah, I mean, we are all cyclists at the same time, you know, so and, um, so from what I've learned is you always respect the weaker, you know, um, um, participant in the traffic, so always the one that is weaker than you, and so we always yield to cyclists, of course, even if we like it, it's super strong. SUV, yeah, but that's what it's again about. Such a relaxing and calm ride when you want it, but of course, once again, power when you need it or when you want it, of course. Well, but then we have, you know, these new technologies that are supposed to save some fuel, mild hybrid, some recuperation. There is this efficiency mode as well that is available. Um, the car is for example, using this sailing or coasting effect from time to time, depending on the situation, it's more rolling without much resistance and so on. The throttle input is being reduced. Yeah, yet at the same time, you cannot expect wonders as for the fuel economy from this vehicle. So somewhere 12 to 13 liters, even if you keep it calm on 100 kilometers, that's about like 18 mpg, 22 mpg UK. Yeah. So the fuel consumption is still high for the V8, no wonder. If you want to have it more efficient, then you would step down to a normal Q8 or Q7. And this can be done also with the petrol engine. For example, the 3 liter V6 is a very good engine, um, definitely you know, powerful enough, but better in the fuel economy. So we really see that the the eight cylinder here is definitely more thirsty, or thirst, yeah. So here also when you're just cruising around, it's always fun to have some mini slalom in there. And to me, I think it's the best steering in an SUV at the moment. I even think that it's better steering than in the Porsche. Um, Summer, it's, you know, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, it feels a little bit more, you know, a little race here in the Porsche, but here from the best overall setup, when you combine that this car is not being used primarily on the racetrack, but you just have everyday driving comfort, but at the same time with a lot of precision from the steering wheel. Let's go back to the auto mode. This is, you know, something that can be combined at the same time. You can also have the off-road mode, by the way. Off-road mode pumps it up all the way max out for best ground clearance, then available at lower speeds. And um, at the same time, the traction control is, is put to, also to an off-road mode as well. And when you go faster, 
the suspension automatically goes down again or you pick it again in the drive select. Most of the time you leave it in auto mode and that's just what it is. Here are the different gauges. You can switch them. The more classic analog style is quite nice. Why not? And once again, so silent, such a great ride here. If you can pick in the market the base sport seats, definitely go with them. They will give you even more comfort. And of course, if you can pick in the Alcantara surface on the inside, this will be even better because this rather stiff surface will also somewhat reduce the comfort. If we compare the visibility here, Q7, Q8, here we have a little bit more like upright standing pillars due to the rear, so the overall visibility is actually better. Yet again, on the racetrack, we felt more difference Q7 and Q8, whereas here than with the with the road driving, the differences diminish a little bit. At some point you have to ask yourself what is like really a subjective feeling, what is an objective feeling. Yes, the wheel size does make a difference. Um, to me, I always have a little bit more fun driving in the Q8. It might also be just that I know what's going on in the exterior, a little bit from the wheels then. Also here with the, with the A-pillar, weight distribution maybe just slightly different the esc setup we experienced that on the test track is also somewhat a little bit different so the q8 to me a notch more driving fun but especially when you compare these two sporty models here is really just very very small nuances so we can really say that um driving wise so many things that this car is doing really, really, really good. So silent, great assistance systems, awesome performance, steering, you know, precision and the agility, really, really great. Yeah, they're just then basically three things you can criticize about this vehicle. This is the, the high consumption and it is minimal possible to produce performance engines that are also quite efficient. Quite efficient, um, not necessarily the case here. Then, of course, the you know, missing more sustainable interiors that also stay cooler in summer. And yeah, you know, about pricing, in comparison to the Iris Q8, there you save some money, yes, but of course, 100k. It's somewhat standard in this class and also at this, you know, horsepower figure and so on. But overall, it's of course always tough to swallow a car overall for that price. Not everyone can afford that. But even more important that we have to review for you. So, um, you know, if you dream of this car, then you can just go all the back, all the way back again, watch the performance part or just the visual beauties. But once again, very interesting two vehicles here for today. And now to our conclusion for today with the new Audi SQ8 and the Audi SQ7. Both for sure very attractive SUVs, both with a sporty styling. Of course, here today with the black accentuations, that's just an option. You could also pick the black accentuations here on the Q7, on the SQ7. The difference is really just a little bit overhang, a little bit more practicability for the Q7 and the option for the third seating row. And of course, here with the SQ8, a little sportier style, especially than in this rear part. So I think it's more a you know design versus practicability decision. Which one would I take? Hmm. Well, you know, this Q8 styling here is done in a way that it doesn't limit the back so much. So I personally probably would stick with the sporty design because I do not need the third seating row. But it might be different for other ones. So I think um, the design here, very sporty for an SUV. So is the driving. Really unexpected driving dynamics for such a big and heavy car. This is really very well done, especially the very precise steering. And if you compare it, for example, to the RSQ8, which we also have a video of, a very interesting one with beautiful landscape and great driving. You should check that out. We'll also link that video. This one here, 25,000 euros or dollars cheaper. 
just for 0.3 seconds in the acceleration, it is slower than the RSQ8, so this is definitely a better price performance ratio. The interior is with a high build quality and also very well to control. Yes, you also have a lot of touchscreen control, but it is very well executed and the menu structure is really simple. So I think very well to control and the offering of space is good as well. That then again, a little bit better in the Q7 or here the SQ7 and that they went for the petrol engines again. Yeah, I mean, you can understand that worldwide it just made more sense and it really more fits to these, you know, to these performance cars. The only thing that is missing is an animal skin replacement for, especially for the US market. In Europe, we at least can get some Alcantara on the seats. Of course, you would need world, but also sportier seats and also some that are a little bit more sustainable. Other than that, this is for a sporty SUV, almost perfection in the execution. So, I hope you enjoyed our comparison episode for today. We surely did in producing it. And of course, tune in next time. Thank you so much.